So good day, everybody. I am here with Dr. Mark Cannon. He's a pediatric dentist uh, from Chicago. And we're here to talk about wonderful things that are available in dentistry today and also about wonderful things that are about to be available. So how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, Rolando. How are you, my friend? I am doing just fine. So, um, you know, with uh, the development of materials that can be applied or used in pediatric dentistry, how, how long have you been practicing pediatric dentistry? Well, I started at Northwestern University and Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago in 1978. And that's when I started working in the Department of Biological Materials. I completed a master's in pediatric dentistry by doing research with some of the greats in biological materials at Northwestern University, people like Evan Greener and Gene Lottenschlager. And I've been very involved with research since that time and education. So I not only have a full-time, very busy private practice, but I also teach almost a full-time equivalent with uh, the residents in pediatric dentistry at Anna Robert Laurie Children's Hospital. I have continued to do my research. But you also do a lot of lecturing all over the world. I do a good amount of presentations at uh, the national meetings, the, as you mentioned, the international meetings. I've been driven to do this because when I was, was recruited into pediatric dentistry, it was by one of the fathers of pediatric dentistry, Dr. Ralph Ireland, who told me a pediatric dentist had to do three things. Had to practice, so he knew what he was doing with patients. Had to teach, so he could transmit that knowledge to further generations. And had to do research, because no one knew what they were doing. Dentistry didn't have good research, and that's why I've been so involved with development of new materials. Now, <clears throat> you know, uh, you, okay, so you started in the late 70s and, you know, uh, you have seen all these okay. different types of materials that have been used, you oh. know, the good things, the bad things, uh, reasons for failure, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you do clinical research, that should provide input for the development of new materials. Absolutely. I, in fact, I often will lecture to people that all of us, we have an obligation to look at what we're doing in our practices and say, hey, was it, what is it that we can do much better? What is it that we can help develop? And that's why I've been so involved with a number of dental companies trying to improve the quality of care by improving the materials we use every day. Okay, so, you know, that's, that, that, that is just an amazing, you know, thought process. Not everybody has that thought process of trying to be involved in not only clinical practice, but also providing input for product development. Um, I, I, and I'll tell a, a, a short story. The first time I came to Bisco to listen to a lecture, uh, it was in 1999. Mm -hmm. And I sat there as a, you know, 98 maybe. I was recently a, a, a new grad, right. you know, right out of dental school. And the first lecture I saw was Dr. Mark Ken. Yeah. And he started talking about all these materials, Portland cement, You're calcium right. release. Right. And I was like, what is he talking about? Right. And here we are, 2019. Yeah. And I want to say that that lecture, you finished off that lecture saying, it's not what you do, it's who you are. Mm -hmm. And that definitely, I, I wanna say that it helped shape um, what I try to do now. Oh, uh, don't blame me. Yes, you are to blame, so <laughs> I am the product of your thought process. Oh. Okay, now, this, in 1999, you were talking about the importance of calcium release. Absolutely, because dentistry has known forever. We've been using calcium-based products going back in the 40s and 50s, or some of the greats in dentistry always talked about calcium release. Teeth need calcium. And it's really kind of silly to think that when it comes to ions that you should just throw one ion like fluoride. I mean, I know fluoride's the god of dentistry, but you have to use calcium and phosphate to help teeth heal to help form new dentin, to form appetite. So being at Northwestern and being with people, some great people at Northwestern University, 
who were actually the top names in Portland Cement, gave me a lot of you know, impetus. It gave me the desire to learn more in the Portland Cement Association being in Skokie, Illinois. So I immediately decided we had to have a better tricalcium, dicalcium silica product. All right, so, you know, the, 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 the interaction between cal calcium and the tooth structure has been documented. Very well documented. This is, this is not new. This, this is, is something that has been, it's in the, in the literature, Absolutely. and it's been documented for a long time. Yeah, decades and decades and hundreds and hundreds of studies. So we absolutely know that we have decalcification that occurs due to caries, and the decalcification is the issue we have to deal with. So calcification is important. Floor appetite prevents the beginnings of cavities. If you want to heal the dentin, you're going to need to have calcium, and you need to have an alkaline environment. And that's the thing that we get with tricalcium, dicalcium silicate. You get the calcium release and you get the alkaline environment, which helps form new hard tissue and it prevents the growth of the pathogens, the cavities producing bacteria hate an alkaline environment. Because, you know, I, I, I remember when I, you know, I, I, I didn't do a lot of endo when after I graduated and I, I you know, I, that wasn't my thing. But I remember that when I was in dental school, when you had a, a tooth that you were doing root canal, you had to use a, a um, calcium hydroxide solution. Mm -hmm. You will put it in the tooth and leave it there for, uh, you know, several days. And then when the patient came back, it was fine. It was clean. Yep. And the reason I was explained, and this is what I learned in the lectures, was due to the alkaline pH. Yes, alkaline pH is very important. And so that's why in developing these resin-modified tricalcium, dicalcium materials, you have to have an alkaline pH. Um, it's something that when I lecture at different universities and institutions, the question people bring up all the time is about acidic monomers. And I say, yeah, because Obviously, strep mutans, streptococcus mutans, prefers an acidic environment. Lactobacilli grow in a more acidic environment. But when you make it alkaline, you're preventing the growth of a lot of these pathogens. Now, when you brought the idea to the industry, so you know, we're talking about bringing research to the forefront of product development. It's not only about the marketing needs you know, or the market needs, but it's about generating products that provide a, a, a better service, uh, but bringing the idea from the research, you know, component. Um, you bring this idea to the industry, and Bisco hears you out. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you had long conversations with Dr. byung mm -hmm. all right? Um, and you present this idea. And Bisco started developing a product. Mm -hmm. And I remember that you talked about this all the time, product being developed, product being developed. It took a while. Yes, it does. It takes a long time because you can go through many formulations. And, and my favorite story is I tried to make one myself. Awesome. Was, yeah. How did that go? Very, very badly. <laughs> uh, it was absolutely had no calcium release whatsoever because the resin was wrong. And this is where you have to have the great chemistry that Bisco is known for, where you have to have the chemists who understand how to use the different monomers so you can have a good polymerization and yet you can have the material itself release the ions you need and be alkaline. It has to be hydrophilic. And other companies have tried it. I mean, you know, there's other companies have tried to make a light cured MTA product and they have not worked. And they have not worked because they were not able to get the right type of monomer mix that will allow it to be hydrophilic enough for the release of the calcium and for the alkalinity to work. And as you know, this has been tested. Many people have done research. Gandolfi, Prati, uh, Costa, Hebling have all shown that every study shows that Theracal, LC, releases calcium and is alkaline. So, Theracal is born based upon the idea of calcium release and the research that you brought to, to the industry 
and also, you know, the, the, the chemistry thought process of Bisco as a company being run by and founded by, by a chemist. Now, again, that took a while, but that was the beginning of, you know, the Thera age, yes. at least from a Bisco perspective, you know, yeah. introducing TheraCal LLC as a product and how, uh, you know, this product has been little by little kind of like revolutionizing the way, you know, dentistry is being practiced or at least restorations are being done today. The, 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 the concept of lining has been around for a while. Yes, absolutely. But lining with something that does those two things. Right. Which I, is release calcium and generate an alkaline pH. Now, a lot of us have been forever uh, followers of like the open sandwich technique, or if you had a deep restoration, you would put a base in a, of resin modified glass ionomer. And I was using that extensively early and on. And that works. It works. Out. It's, it's a, what they call a biointeractive product because it releases an ion fluoride. And so that helps with fluorapatite. But you know what? Fluorapatite's not that important to the dentin, nor is it that important to the pulp. Fluoride is an enzyme inhibitor, so it cuts back on growth of bacteria. But you really need to have that real alkaline environment. And as you know, ARM GIs, when they go on, they're acidic. And they work by acid-base reaction. So it takes time for that pH to neutralize. So it came to me that we should do a resin modified, quote, Portland cement. And that started the family of Thera. And the Thera family will continue to grow because now, of course, there's not just TheraCal LC, but we also have TheraSam, which is a cement product that goes on acidic and becomes then alkaline. And then, of course, TheraCal PT, as you can see here. And Theracal PT is a dual cured Theracal that's very useful for pulpotomy and pulpotomy techniques. And I personally love it for deep basing. I use it whenever I get close to the pulp. I always put Theracal PT in. Being dual cured, it continues to cure, so you don't have to worry about any uncured monomer. Now, all these products are based on the Theracal. I want to say chemistry, right? Okay, which is trying to find that balance, high, uh, balance between the pot, the good polymerization, good physical properties for its indication, but yes. also that calcium release, Absolutely. that alkaline pH generation. Uh, I will, I, I will never forget when at Bisco, uh, Dr. Liang Chang told me about developing Therasem and how they were able to develop this, you know, self-adhesive cement that was dual cure that went from acidic so it could have adhesive capabilities and then became alkaline. I was stunned because I didn't think they'd be able to do it. But this is a great cement. This is my go-to cement for zirconium crowns. And in pediatric dentistry, we do zirconium crowns. I, I think they look beautiful, but the tissue response is good. And we don't have to worry about any of the metal component like you do with a stainless steel crown. Right. So this is great for a lot of pediatric dentists. And I use it for all my ceramic crowns and actually for my stainless steel crowns too. You know, one of the things that at least, uh, when we have meetings at Bisco about, you know, developing or using the Thera concept for new products, it's just, it opens up yes, it this vast array of possibilities, you know. And you know, we're working on different things and we cannot, you know, just disclose everything we're working on, but there are so many different applications for a hydrophilic monomer that allows for calcium release, alkaline pH generation. It, it, it's just outstanding, you know. Yes. And, and, and I enjoy every meeting that you attend because 
Every, well, it, it's kind of hectic because you always come up with new ideas and we just can't keep up with you. You know, it's a little annoying. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's annoying for me, too. Yeah. <laughs> it goes both ways. Yes, it does. <laughs> now, let's... As I say, new technique that we've been talking about for 10 years, but go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, one of the things that I have to assume when... when because of the amount of patients that you treat and the amount of uh, education that you provide. And because people know all over the world that you have been involved in the development of all these products, you got a lot of questions. Oh, I do. So what kind of questions do you get? Well, unfortunately, I, I, I'm a little disturbed because when I do these presentations, and often there's presentations on something completely different from dental materials. It could be like on rare diseases. Sometimes people ask me questions like, well, aren't you worried about the acidic monomers? You know, I always tell them, um, just check the pH on these. You know, and it's really easy to do. If you want to do it at home, you can do it yourself. All you have to do is get a pH strip you use to check your swimming pool, and you just wet it and squirt some of this material on, and you'll find it is alkaline. It's very alkaline. Then do it with something else. Try it with Vitrobon, and you'll find Vitrobon is very acidic. Well, I hope that we all know that alkaline is vastly better for the pulp, not acidic. So please, if you worry about using acidic monomers, stay away from acidic materials. But remember, you can check this yourself and read everything in the literature about it. Theracal, the family, the Thera family, it's alkaline. And you get the release of calcium. Now, I, I know that you are a little flustered with some of the, um, you know, resistance of, you know, educators and, you know, certain companies about the success of Theracal because that's basically it. It's the resistance mm -hmm. about the success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, everybody generates a story in order to, oh, yeah. you know, kind of like uh, try to stop yeah. the other product from growing. So I know that you have been a little bit frustrated about that. So tell us what is that about? Well, actually, you'll find that true in everything. When you look at people who first discovered that, for instance, Helicobacter pylori was the reason for stomach ulcers, they were criticized for a long time. The researchers who said that tuberculosis was an infectious disease and not inherited were criticized because people said, no, it runs in families, it has to be genetic. Well, now we look at this, we all laugh, right? right? Well, one day down the road, everyone's gonna be all laughing about people who said, well, don't use Theracal because it has acidic monomers, because mm -hmm. eventually the truth comes out. And that's why, you know, we'll see down the road because nothing uh, shows you more that you have been correct when people try constantly to imitate your success. And as time goes on, and eventually other companies are coming out with similar products to Theracal, you'll have to say, wow, it must work, because they're making it now, too. Right, yeah. right. And it, 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 it's interesting that you say that, because yesterday um, we unveiled the first Theracal knockoff, which is fine which is great. Uh, yeah. We just saw that uh, from a company. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, don't you know, advertise them. <laughs> yeah, let's just not say who makes it. Um, so, well, Dr. Kenneth, it's been a pleasure, as always, well, to, you know, first you, of all, Orlando. thank you for inviting us oh, to your office and you. let us Thanks invade uh, um, your space and giving us a little bit of time to talk about Thera. Um, Thera, uh, we believe at Bisco that is a wonderful thing and we're putting a lot of resources into it and I do want to say I want to thank you for your constant input for being tenacious about not letting it die and for always bringing up all the ideas because we do take them seriously although you get frustrated ah. <laughs> well thank you it's it's worth it it's all worth it all right thank you, thank you everyone thanks